Now we come to address you from the very heart of the earth. I am Pelur. You have heard the sound of gnomes. You have heard the sound of their marching. You have heard the sound of intensification, for this is their form of transmutation, of throwing off the burden of humankind. This is the frenzy pitch that is reached when they must transmute the burdens of humanity without the violet flame. This intensity is what produces volcanic eruption, earthquake, hurricane, tidal wave, flood, and storm. Thus, from the depths of the earth, from the surface to the very center, to the very part of the violet flame sea, gnomes, elemental beings of the earth, under the guidance of myself and beloved Virgo, do perform the tasks necessary and fundamental to the holding of the balance in the earth element. Of all elementals, these carry the greater weight of density physical density of mankind's karma. Though the mighty undines bear the heavy weight of the astral plane, though the mighty sylphs bear the weight of that air element and the mental belt, and though the fiery salamanders bear the weight of all abuses of fire in the etheric octave, know then that elemental life is a pyramid, and the base of the pyramid is the earth, and the next level of the pyramid is the water, and the next level of the pyramid is the air, and the next level of the pyramid is fire. When you, sons and daughters of God, place yourselves in the very center and heart of this pyramid, then, by 360 degrees of your own threefold flame, your own threefold flame and manifest Christhood, you give then to these beings action of sacred fire, which unless they are the advanced adepts among their kind, they have not. They have not the sacred fire, beloved, but depend upon you. Therefore, the alchemy of their transmutation without your insertion of violet flame and accelerated violet flame does require them to practice the science of alchemy, the all-chemistry of God, in order to hold the balance. But when the ingredient of violet flame is added, then you will see what the meaning is of the term world transmutation. Let joy go forth in this place, for we are joyous. For sons and daughters of God, children of the light, devotees of the divine mother of all cosmos, do assemble in such mindfulness of the path of resurrection, of the path of transmutation, as to make all elementals sing a mighty anthem to you this night. Thus, beloved, they are grateful for so very little. I come, for your work can avail much and much more. I would suggest you hearken to Arcturus and Victoria, that you use the violet flame in every way, that you sing and dance and march to the violet flame, that you determine all types of actions whereby you can accompany 
them with the violet flame, so that the violet flame goes forth from every angle of consciousness, from every level, continuously, continuously pouring, beloved. Write songs to the violet flame. We will assist you, and the Elohim of music will assist you. Let us see then how violet flame can be that singular point of intercession that can stop yet earth changes, calamities, war, etc. Thus we are here, beloved, also to speak to you regarding your body elemental, who has the greatest task of all in maintaining the earth body principally. Beloved ones, when you give to the body elemental all that is required for the alchemy of eternal youth, yes, I say eternal, eternal youth by the light of God, you will find your partnership extending through and beyond your body elemental to legions of gnomes, not a few, but many. I counsel you then to hike in these hills and mountains. I counsel you to acquaint, acquaint yourselves with the rock, the terrain, the grasses, the wildlife, to truly enter the domain of the elementals, for this is a mighty abode for them, a place of refuge set aside here then by church and state. Blessed ones, we come then, bearing the aura of the cosmic ovoid, and that ovoid of light we seal about you, and we qualify this ovoid of light with the special quality of bridging the gap between your level of consciousness, both the human consciousness and the Christ consciousness, to the level, wavelength, and abiding place of all elementals. You may reinforce this ovoid with your mantra to Helios and Vesta and with the great central sun disk, thereby using these two mantras and visualizing the ovoid around you, you will have the means of greater sensitivity to the elementals which you have long desired. Some of you who are past the age when children see elementals will begin to sense their presence and then to see them. This is the gift which the four hierarchs of the elements have determined is the greatest gift we could afford you at this conference. For we desire to see a thinning of the veil betwixt elemental life and the sons and daughters of God. As you then use this soul void as a means to entering in to new levels of consciousness, take care that you seal yourself in the tube of light and perform your fiats to Archangel Michael for protection. For I would remind you that gnomes, in a sense, and other elementals carry human characteristics. And in these human characteristics, being so burdened by the mass effluvia of the earth, they do show forth those states of consciousness that are sometimes rebellious, sometimes angry, sometimes fed up with a humankind who so abuse the very earth beneath their feet. Thus, beloved, it may become a question of taming some elementals, of encouraging them to trust you by consistent love, by consistent firmness, by consistent determination that they shall begin to accept some disciplines by the authority of your own Holy Christ Self, such disciplines as giving, 
The heart head in hand decrees from beginning to end each day with them, requiring that they recite these and also giving their personal fiats to Archangel Michael. There are grandfather and grandmother elementals. There are those who have gone on in great attainment who therefore have sustained themselves for thousands of years. Whereas the ordinary elementals lifespans are no greater than human lifespans due to the fact that they do not have a threefold flame. When you work with the hierarchs under us yet over the less developed elementals, you can give to them much reinforcement by your decrees that they might teach and pass on to the elementals who are as the foot soldiers, the ones carrying the greatest burdens in each of the kingdoms. These elementals are the ones who are most weighted down, who most need the violet flame, and yet, by the very burden upon themselves, are sometimes not open to give the decrees. Thus you must pray for them, give the violet flame for them, until there is a melting, a literal melting of that shell they have established around themselves to protect themselves from mankind's inhumanity to, hu to man and to the elemental life. I am releasing to you now by the special crystal of my heart light rays that come to quicken your heart at a certain level that you might know a new bonding to Aramis and Diana, to myself and Virgo, to Aries and Thor and Neptune and Luara. Having your crystal as focuses on your altars as so many of you do shall also become that point whereby the worlds may cross and the opening of the way for tremendous conscious cooperation between the three kingdoms can accelerate now at the end of this decade and unto the end of this decade as you see the dark cycle continuing to deposit upon your doorstep each day that which must go into the violet flame. Think of the many purposes to which you can direct a single violet flame decree, purposes which bring you closer to your victory, purposes which bring you to the purification of the heart of all past records of witchcraft. Do not lean upon this method of influencing others any longer, though you may know that you have this ability in your mind. I say to you, cease from it at every hand and trust the mind of God to deal in divine justice with all those whom you may consider to be your enemies. Gnomes must be trained in many ways, beloved, and they must also understand that the violet and purple flames in all shades and hues, they must take this on and discard those reds and orange reds and ugly chartreuses and loud oranges that they have put about themselves under the influence of those not benign fallen angels. I speak to you then of an occasion, for this occasion will come to anyone, and it has to do with past enslavements of elementals and the necessity to recognize that when you work with this evolution as when you work with angels, you must always work to your holy Christ self, thereby assuring yourself 
you will not incur karma. Some of you know of the legends of Solomon, who became one with a mighty shed, an elemental of great stature of his time, who bore him up and took him hither and thither. If you would truly become a part of the hierarchy of overseers of the elementals, you must learn personal discipline and adeptship. Many people on the path toward that goal of becoming a master or gaining greater self-mastery have been tested by advanced elementals. And so be not surprised when they come offering to do certain services such as dealing with your enemies in your behalf. Such invitations on their part can be very inviting. And therefore I say, we will not allow them to take place until your own Christhood is more important to you than any power that you might wield over another by whatever means. Thus on a certain day and date in Virginia, a fiery salamander did appear to your messenger, Mark Prophet, and did speak to him, and did say to him, I have seen what your neighbors have done to you. I have seen what that certain individual has done to you. I am prepared to burn his house down at your command. If you knew, beloved, the gravity an awesome burden of the persecution of this individual, you would understand how this was indeed a test. The messenger did reply to this eager salamander, yet very disciplined salamander, worship God. Do not act in judgment, do not perform deeds against the seed of the wicked. For God is righteous. He will judge all. And you will see, O Salamander, in time, that the law of karma will take care of that one and any other enemies of our bands. Go in peace. Thus the salamander did bow to Mark Prophet as a messenger of the brotherhood and did obey him. And that was the conclusion of the matter, save for one thing. The messenger did confide this to his consort that she might know of the initiation of elementals and that all moving upward on the path must be prepared to understand that though elementals are powerful and have certain attainment, yet you have the Christ consciousness and you must teach them what it is to realize that Christhood. Thus you will assist an elemental of any kingdom to enter the path of personal discipleship under Jesus Christ, that he too one day might gain a threefold flame and through it be bonded to the heart of the Savior, who is the Savior of all evolutions, elementals, angels, and sons and daughters of God. Thus, beloved, Know that mastery comes to you day by day as you have the sharpened mind to study self and know when there is mental compromise, when there is mental rationalization, when you may now and then indulge in the exercise of tricking the great law as though you might outsmart it by some folly of the human mind. 
Know this then, beloved, that there are indeed great hierarchs in the elemental kingdom serving under us, many hundreds of thousands who have in this hour a greater adeptship than many of you. Yet, as I said, what they do not have until they prove themselves beyond the shadow of a doubt that they can be trusted, they do not have that Christ consciousness. And I tell you, it is an awesome ceremony before the hierarchs of the elementals and before the ruby ray masters and Padma Sambhava. Lord Jesus Christ, Maitreya Gautama, Sanat Kumara, when these elementals come as a graduating class and may receive some portion of the divinity that is vouchsafed otherwise only to sons and daughters of God. Therefore, acquaint thyself with the elementals. Learn from them, but also know that though you may not have excelled in personal adeptship, the presence of your own Christ self and your own Christhood does place you in a superior position to these elementals. See to it then that you always command them to go forth in righteousness, bearing the sword of the Lord our righteousness, to do good, to shun evil, and to never themselves succumb to the suggestion that is put upon them by the manipulative fallen angels, to compromise the law for immediate gain rather than to be patient until the law does fulfill all things in every man. We then applaud this gathering and your hearts inclined to the mighty ones who sustain not only the platform of evolution of planet Earth, but your own platform of evolution, your own four lower bodies. For if we, all of us assigned to planet Earth, did not perform our tasks daily, the Earth would soon become uninhabitable and the delicate sensitivities of the bodies you wear could not survive in a planet so polluted. Where is there such a case as this, beloved, that so requires all who serve in this capacity and not to fail day by day for such a burden that should come upon the earth and mankind. Some of you may not perform your jobs for a day or a week or a month. The earth keeps on going. But if we were to neglect ours, beloved, the earth would be in far greater trouble today than she is. We say this, beloved, because all of our bands know that their jobs are key and important. None of us, from the least to the greatest, should ever consider that something we do is not important, not interesting, not challenging enough, not creative enough, and not lucrative enough. We know that five and a half billion souls wearing four lower bodies depend upon us, and we will see them through Come what may, no matter what the price, for our elementals know that they do not have eternal life and that what they, when they pass away, it is permanent. Yet their service to you means more to them than life. I ask you to think about this and apply it to yourself and you will find that you shall quickly gain a mastery that you thought you had but did not, but now have at such deep levels of your being, for you have decided to walk in the gnome shoes, in the feet that are shod with sandals of fiery salamanders, to walk 
where the sylphs of the air move and the undines of the water. Understanding, therefore, that life is consciousness, that creation is consciousness, know then that all earth has consciousness, even if it be low level of consciousness, whether it be the rock, the earth, the grass, the waters, God's consciousness does permeate all, and all substance is evolving toward the great central sun by a process of purification. Visualize then billions of coils of violet fire coiling back to the central sun and the pollutions of the earth passing through the center of those coils being transmuted. This is the lawful, joyous, cosmic way for world transmutation that every hour of every day and in the first rays of the dawn, world pollution passes back to the central sun by violet flame coils established by sons and daughters of God who decided in this 20th century ending to become adepts and to make it so. This is a vision I see for you passing into the 21st century. Your recognition of the reality of elementals and their task, your recognition of their burden, your recognition of them as being great scientists with minds vast controlling all forces of nature, your recognition of this and the part you can play can make all the difference. Is it not a grand challenge to be a part of Earth's victory? Yes. We count it so, beloved, and we count it so because you are here supporting us. You are cheering us on. You are determined to make it possible for us to finish the job. For this, we bow at the altar of this holy grail. We bow before the altar of your heart, and in unison we say, we thank you with all of our hearts.
us have our love offering. Lord God Almighty, seven mighty Elohim Archangels, holy Kumaras, Johans of the Rays, we thank thee for thy presence in the universe, that thou hast made thyselves one in God, attained to that Godhood, and are now God-free beings. We are grateful for the magnification of thy love, wisdom, power, mercy, justice of Buddha, of Christ. We are grateful 
to all beings of light who are God in manifestation, that we might also be that God in manifestation. O mighty I am presence, we pray. Thus shall we be free, no longer prisoners of our minds, our desires, our addictions. O Lord, we are grateful for this day of opportunity to become whole, to become thee. Therefore, by thy wholeness we ask, multiply then this love offering, multiplied by the power of ten and return to the giver. We are thy instruments, O God. Let thy light flow through us and let that light be sufficient that we as a community who find ourselves so bonded in love by ancient design and future cosmic purpose. We desire as one to bring this teaching to the earth, to all light bearers. Empower us, O oh God, empower us also to give that substance whereby this might be fulfilled in the name I am that I am. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and the Divine Mother, Amen.